American Truck Simulator is a game about driving trucks. Published by SCS Software, ATS makes the third game in the Truck Simulator franchise. Released in February of 2016, with two drivable states in the southwest of the United States. California, from the sandy shores of Los Angeles, to the Redwood-dominated north, and Nevada, with the populous metros of Vegas and the vast deserts. Arizona would follow shortly after as DLC content, and mark the start of a long line of future DLC releases to fill in the map of ATS. The work done by SCS and their team to create a scale model of the United States is phenomenal. To date of writing this, ATS has 14 states mapped out, after the release of Kansas on November 30th of 2023. Regarding scale, the fandom page for ATS states, quote, It takes about three hours in real time to travel from Bellingham, Washington to Brownsville, Texas in-game, end quote. I'm willing to bet that if you have a Steam account and you regularly play games, then you have this game in your library. It is probably uninstalled and with 0 to 10 hours of play, you probably bought it when it was on sale, checked it out a little, and if you're like me, you found it boring or maybe lost interest. I am asking you to reconsider. I felt that way too, but I eventually decided to tackle getting all of the achievements, of which there are 96. This is my new thing and I'll probably outgrow it. This video is expressly to recap that process because it was a lot. From start to finish, the trials and tribulations, the blood, sweat, and tears that make up American Truck Simulator. الوهاب الرزاق الفتاح العليم القابض الباطل القافل الرافع المعز It all starts off in California. My first job, an ice cream delivery from one Sacramento Walbert to another. 6 miles or 31 minutes. A job this size takes only 90 seconds if you're familiar with the controls and usually ends with your first attempt to back your cargo into the delivery zone. And if you're not so familiar with the controls, it will take you 300 seconds and some gentle cursing before you can collect your first $424.11 experience. The dopamine drips. My name is RKH. I'm 27 years old, but you may not be able to discern that from my figure. You reek of it. An invisible sword of al emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. In real life, I work a full-time position as a customer service rep, but in my off time, I drive. The cycle starts. Immediately following my first delivery, I pull four more shifts between California and Washington. This is all the game has to offer, I think to myself, as I prepare for the following hours of deliveries as I slowly watch achievements unlock. Having no true skill for the amount of time I'm about to invest in the game, and having no real worries, I begin to pick up on easy shortcuts I can employ to make this time more enjoyable. If you're not into hyper-realism and roleplay aspects of simulator games, I am right there with you. Different strokes for different folks. So what's the point if you aren't going to fully immerse yourself in this world? I've got one hyphenated word for you, fella. Semi-truck. What person hasn't imagined driving a hunking goliath of metal and diesel? To pull the horn for a bunch of kids on the side of the street? Just me versus the open road? A real-life mech suit, basically? If we're really alike, you may also have been recommended that career on your aptitude test in middle school. Maybe you went a different direction, took a different career path, and I truly hope that you found one that makes you happy. 
If not, I heavily advise that you not settle into it. You're worthy of your dreams, and as long as they don't harm others or put people at risk, I'd like to see you achieve those dreams, especially if those dreams involve delivering 20,000 pounds of fertilizer to San Antonio. As I said, I didn't take the advice of the career aptitude test, but with ATS, I can now entertain that possibility. However, now I have a bit more freedom in how I'd like to drive. My driving style is aggressive. Reckless, really. It's how I like to play. Sue me. For example, did you know that if you slightly steer into the adjacent lanes of traffic, you can cause those cars to halt movement so that you can change lanes or merge easier? Did you also know that this only works if you give that traffic time to slow down before you pull in front of them? Wild! Do you enjoy having to navigate a minefield of absent-minded NPC vehicles? I don't, so I drive in between two lanes at a time. No more passing traffic. Is your truck low on gas? Better refuel. How about you pull up to that intersection, detach your trailer to block traffic, and now you don't have to merge back onto the road. Do you like being ticketed for accidentally love tapping a car because you maybe didn't steer enough into that right hand turn? What about that ticket for going 6 miles per hour over the speed limit? No, right? Hell no. Take a little gander over at your settings, and what's this? Traffic offense? Why don't you just uncheck that little box? And that other little box for fatigue simulation? Time is money after all. I didn't know about these toggle switches at first. My friend Cammy found them and told me about them. I used to just soak up every little ticket and fine, and I didn't think I would ever recoup those tens of thousands of dollars. As you level up, however, jobs for 10,000, 50,000, even 100,000 become more and more common. Take your punches, take out a few loans, and keep going. 96 achievements. When I started, it was 91, but Kansas would bring five more. How do you even begin to tackle 91 achievements? You do you, but I did me, and I favor grouping. State by state. Starting with California, you have three. One for discovering every city in the state, and two for special delivery options. This follows a general theme with ATS achievements. Typically, ATS achievements follow one of five different paths. Cities, cutscenes, deliveries, discovery, and management. With a couple of achievements tied to day-to-day -day activities such as refueling, parking, brushing your teeth, etc., California has 21 cities that count toward the achievement for California Dreamin', but dozens more that are referred to as scenery towns. Scenery towns are, quote, cities or communities that are unmarked on the map. I'm ashamed to say I didn't know about these until writing this video, but this is a perfect example of what SCS did with this game. SCS thought of everything. As I was driving around California, I found myself continuously shocked by all of the details. Sure man, there are some copy-pasted flora, but when I'm sitting in the cab looking out over the wheel at the changing landscape as I drive north, I find this critique slipping from my consciousness. The desert peels away beside me, lending way to lush green hills as the sparkling blue of the Pacific laps wave onto lave onto the jagged bluffs below, music playing from my headphones as I step in and out of the one world and into another. ATS does provide a radio tool in-game, but to my knowledge it requires you to move files into a folder within your documents. I found it more convenient to just cue some tracks on the side, or shuffle all while I'm driving rubber across the blacktop. 21 cities, 2 cargo deliveries between 2 seaports, the port of San Francisco and Oakland Shippers, and 3 deliveries from Darshel Uzo within California. I don't think I pronounced that correctly, that's going to be a common theme. After that, I'm heading north to Washington. Washington steps up the achievements from 3 to 8. 1 cities achievement, 3 discovery achievements, three cargo achievements, and one miscellaneous achievement for using a ferry. Ferries don't make as much of an appearance in ATS as they did in the European truck simulator games, which sucks because the only thing better than a big-ass truck is a boat that can transport a big-ass truck. Within the US you'll find two, Galveston to Bolivar in Texas, and Port Townsend to Coopville where we are heading now to deliver cargo for one half of the Terminal Terminus achievement. Washington only has 16 cities, but I also have three landmarks to visit as well. These landmarks are Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, and the Coulee Dam. Landmark achievements are often tied in with cutscene achievements, however Washington and California have yet to present these achievements. Not to say that you can't find cutscenes to visit in any of the 14 states, and you absolutely should. Washington also served for the grounds of operation on the two achievements tied to the Forest Machinery DLC. Of these two, I want to focus on Leave No Branch Behind. This achievement says to complete a perfect delivery of at least three Forest Machinery DLC jobs. Perfect deliveries. 
They're not just deliveries graded as excellent, but they also require you to have accumulated no damage, no fines, and to make the delivery on time. The perfect delivery achievements in ATS would be the first of my largest hurdles to overcome. I am reckless, and sure, I can make a delivery on time, maybe even early, but no damages and no fines will be another thing. Knowing I can turn off fines will help, but it was around this time when ATS became something new. When I described my experience in ATS to my friends, I probably sounded insane. This game gives me the tools to sound insane. You can play by the book and get perfect deliveries every single time, or you can bend the rules, up the challenge, and add a high risk, same reward factor to your experience. Needless to say, I didn't switch up my playstyle for these jobs, I just refined it. I would like you to imagine a semi-truck carrying a 106,000 pound log loader, an aggregate weight of 130,000 pounds. That's about 8 elephants or 722 fully grown adult men. I had an editor advise that I input a joke here, and the first thing that came to mind was Peter Griffin. This is about the same weight as 481 Peter Griffins. Now imagine that cluster of mass in your preferred way, charging down the highway at 91 miles per hour. 722 men dodging in between cars that are traveling 20 miles per hour slower than they. No regard for the safety of others, just mass on the move. Did you know that you can drive on the shoulders of roads? At this point, I'm maybe 8 hours into my play. I'm bold and I'm feeling good. I'm riding way up high on cloud 9, baby. And that's when I got my first wake up call. That's right around when physics reminded me that I'm neither unstoppable nor immovable. Force equals mass times acceleration. Mass isn't weight, but for the sake of this argument, let's just say that the 9.81 multiplier from gravity isn't going to change a whole lot when addressing something as simple as turning. 130,000 pounds times 92 miles per hour. Since force is measured in newtons or kilograms times meters per second squared, let's convert and solve for force. 58967 kilograms times 41.1277 meters per second will tell you your momentum, which is mass times velocity. That's the speed you're going right now, but you need to make a 90 degree turn in a block's distance, or 200 meters, so you have to slow down. Let's assume you come to a rolling stop and call that 2 miles per hour. Acceleration is determined by change of velocity, speed for layman, over time. Your initial velocity is 41 meters per second, and your final velocity is 1 meters per second and plug into the formula to solve for acceleration, which is VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AX. Your acceleration comes out to negative 4.2 meters per second squared. Multiplying your acceleration to your massive 58,000 kilogram mass gives you the constant force required to make that stop, or about 243,000 newtons. The force necessary to accelerate a 75 kilogram person at 4G is nearly 3,000 newtons. However, death may be caused by considerably less force. Fortunately, the majority of these newtons will be experienced in your brakes. Unfortunately, ATS doesn't give us a visual breakdown of how much force your brakes can take, but it's safe to assume that you're not going to be making that stop in time. It would be uncanny to see a vehicle that size make that stop. Consider a sci-fi movie where a ship jumps through warp drive. On the receiving end of that jump, the ship just bloops into existence. That would be your truck, just blooping to a rolling stop, your brakes competing with the force of 2.5 times the stopping power of combined airbags and seatbelts to secure a fully grown adult mid-crash at 100 km per hour. If your vehicle actually made that stop in time against the greater will of the universe, the amount of force exerted on the driver of that vehicle would likely see their internal organs explode if their eyes didn't remove themselves from their sockets. The bolts holding your tires to the axles would shatter as the metal paneling on your truck ripped off and continued forward at the speed less the amount of force required to separate them from the truck. The cargo behind would likely end up inside of or even in front of the truck. So what happens? Momentum dictates that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on. So try as you must to stop, you're going to have forward momentum. This momentum is going to ensure that your current system continues in the direction it is heading, against the will of your brakes applying negative acceleration. You'll likely slow down to half your current speed before you make that intersection. You may try to make that turn at 40 miles per hour. Since you steered, you're now turning the direction of your tires away from the forward momentum of your vehicle. Momentum may rotate slightly along that path, but you're now rolling your vehicle along the axis that the momentum is traveling. There goes your perfect delivery. After leaving Washington, I moved south to Oregon.
To any of you who have embarked on journeys of hyperfixation, you'll understand that towards the beginning it's unclear when you've passed the line of, quote, a phase, and quote, a fixation. It's not a clearly defined line, and it changes from topic to topic. With American Truck Sim, and similar games, your time investment for regular play is on the higher end, when compared to other games that is. After clearing California, Washington, and the Forest Machinery DLC, I was approaching 20 to 30 hours of play. I didn't consider this a hyperfixation yet. From the inside looking out, these hours compared to the progress made seemed meager. What I didn't realize at the time, and wouldn't realize for several more hours, is that I was already in too deep. Sable, another game that I have 100%ed and would have considered a hyperfixation at the time of playing, only took me 20 hours to complete in full. I spent several hours each day playing Sable, with daily rotations of queuing up albums or videos to listen to while I played. I talked about Sable with my then girlfriend, now fiancé, and I found myself listening to more Japanese breakfast on the side. Similarly, Death's Door took me 20 hours to complete. When I wasn't playing Death's Door, I was also just thinking about Death's Door. I was looking up locations for missing objects, and begrudgingly deciding how I would manage the umbrella-only playthrough. At 20 hours into ATS, I was already stuck. The impact just wasn't as apparent to myself. That isn't to say that others hadn't taken notice. Around this time, I had also talked my roommate into playing ATS. She had noticed that I had been playing it a lot and took interest in it. Did you know that when you play American Truck Simulator with friends, you can effectively set their game difficulty? <laughs> Hundred percent truck damage, truck damage, and my trailer damage keeps adding up because it's clipping, clipping into the, into the fucking, fucking ground. ground. What, what the, the fuck, fuck is wrong, is wrong with you, dude? dude? <laughs> no, no, stop. stop. Make it worse. I'll bend you with the difference. <laughs> I don't care I don't about real life money, money, man. man. I need, I need the, the, the ATS, ATS dollars, dollars back. back. What the what fuck? The fuck? <laughs> Just adding up to 100% trailer damage, there's nothing I can do. Hundred percent truck damage, and my trailer damage keeps adding up because it's clipping into the fucking ground. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? I don't care about real life money, man. I need the ATS dollars back. What the fuck? I'm just adding up to 100% trailer damage, there's nothing I can do. If it makes you feel any better, I've got I've got 11% truck damage. No, no, that makes me feel much worse, actually. That's percent trailer damage. How the fuck did that even happen? I mean, I know, I mean, I know how, how, it how it happened, but... Yeah, I don't know how that happened either. Uh, I didn't even see it, you know? Convoy mode for American Truck Simulator is fantastic and terrible. If you're looking for a relaxing brain off game to play with friends, you found it. Hopping into a convoy with friends, using the CV radio for comms, and caravanning from city to city making fat stacks is an experience unlike any other. There is no skill cap to worry about, and as long as you can manage your vehicle, it can be as peaceful as you'd like. Or you can just fuck with each other. If you decide to try it out, and if you decide to use mods, know that you must have all the same mods installed as the convoy host, and that these mods must be installed in the same order as the convoy host's mods. For example, if the convoy host has three mods installed, a mod for engine sound pack, a mod for cabin decorations, and a mod for better vegetation models, you must also have those mods installed and in that exact order. Make sure to keep your mod packs up to date per the convoy host as well, otherwise you won't be able to join their convoy. Oregon's achievements list is easy compared to Washington's. Cities with four landmarks, 
driving over Cabbage Hill or Interstate 84, traveling across New Young's Bay Bridge, and delivering cargo from all timber harvest sites. The timber harvest sites achievement, Lumberjack, being the trickiest of the five state achievements. You must deliver from Deep Grove lumber sites in Medford, Bend, Salem, Newport, and Astoria. Newport, Bend, and Astoria all have two Deep Grove locations, with only one of the two being lumber sites. The other is just a sawmill. You must deliver from the correct location, and this type of achievement and issue there within are continuous hurdles to be overcome throughout the game. The best way to tackle this issue is to visit the correct sites with your own truck and deliver cargo from those sites, as opposed to finding jobs for the correct sites over quick jobs. Fortunately, the type of cargo delivered from these sites does not matter. I'm struggling to remember exactly which city in Oregon, but I believe it was Medford. The city discovering points in ATS can be tricky to activate. I don't know how they are programmed into the game, but I've been rationalizing it as a radius around the city or a highlighted portion of road within the city. Some cities can be discovered easily just by driving through them on the interstate. Other cities will require you to exit the highway and enter the city blocks. Medford required you to drive due northwest of the city and towards Grants Pass. I believe the city became discovered upon delivering to the off-site lumber mill for Deep Grove. Like I said, I don't exactly remember if it was Medford, but it was definitely one of the lumber cities in Oregon. By the way, this is by no means the worst case of this issue, we'll get into that much later. Arizona and Nevada served as one state in my mind while grinding out this game. My method for keeping track of these achievements was to keep an open sticky note on my desktop with a brief summary of what needed to be done for an achievement. I was also utilizing the extremely thorough guides produced by Zeran on Steam. You're a legend and a half, bud. Thank you for all of your hard work. Arizona has four achievements. Cities, Delivery to Phoenix, Visiting all of the Colorado River sites, and the Start Your Engine achievement. If you're playing casually, you'll likely get the Powell's Trail without any effort, but for all those still missing this achievement, you need to visit west of Page. If you're entering Page from the south, at the first intersection, just drive west off of the road, and north of Grand Canyon Village, where the road loops around. Start Your Engine is the first achievement of its kind in ATS. The achievement is highlighting the secret areas not mapped. In Tucson, if you're entering from the north and after you've taken the exit into Tucson, if you instead drive away from the city, you will come across a bitumen site. If you drive further beyond bitumen, you will discover a truck racing circuit and a service shop. Nevada only has two achievements. In addition to cities, you also need to deliver cargo to both quarries in Nevada. These are specific deliveries to both coastline mining sites. One is located north of Elko and the other is southeast of Carson City. Around the time that I was trucking through Arizona and Nevada, I decided to tackle the Heavy Cargo DLC achievements, of which there are five. You will receive an achievement after delivering your first heavy cargo, another for delivering a perfect delivery of heavy cargo over 1,000 miles. Uh, for reference, the initial trip set for the job must be greater than 1,000 miles. You can't just increase a 999 mile job to 1,001 miles and receive the achievement. And a third for earning $100,000 over five consecutive heavy cargo deliveries. Those three achievements should naturally unlock as you work towards the I thought this should be heavy achievement. This achievement requires you to deliver one of each heavy cargo. The last achievement tied to this DLC is the How Heavy Am I achievement for weighing out at at least 175,000 pounds. Per Zeran, the easiest way to accomplish this is, quote, to deliver a transformer and use a truck with a sleeper cabin. The international Lone Star Skyrise sleeper should work, but that's still not enough. You also need to fill your fuel tank with the maximum amount of gallons, and then you can go drive to a way station." End quote. My last state to explore is Idaho. What's that? My math. Oh right, so here's the thing. I started this journey without having all of the DLC for ATS. I think my logic was that if I didn't think I could muster the strength to complete this game, I wouldn't have spent more money on it than I already had. So going into this, I had already purchased the previously mentioned DLC back in 2020 on sale for $8 or some shit. I'm serious, when I say that you can get this game for a few dollars, and that I bet many of you watching already own this game, it's cool man, you bought it as a joke, a lot of us did. The question now is whether or not you have the nuts to go grind this shit out like I did. How about this? Let me tell you about Idaho, and if after, if you aren't interested, I understand. Idaho is a motherfucker. 
Released on December 7th of 2020, Idaho launched with five achievements. Gem State requires you to discover all cities, a task of which you should be familiar. The director requires you to find all cutscenes, a first of a long line of all cutscenes achievements. 45th Parallel, as the name suggests, would like you to drive over the halfway point between the equator and the North Pole. And then there is along the Snake River. If you want this achievement, you will also need the Washington DLC, as you will have to deliver cargo perfectly between four specific routes. Kennewick to Lewiston, Boise to Twin Falls, Twin Falls to Pocatello, and Pocatello to Idaho Falls. I probably just have shit luck, because getting this game to give me the latter two routes was like begging the lord to make me two inches taller. The perfect deliveries on top of this made this a rather teeth-pulling adjacent experience, but nonetheless I was granted reprieve and found my deliveries. Words of wisdom, I believe you have to discover the cities you're looking to deliver to, and if you would like to, have better odds. I haven't confirmed this, but also haven't gone back to give a second shit about the Snake River. I'd gladly redo the Snake River achievement a dozen times before I'd like to think about the fifth and final achievement, and the first of a wretched, crooked smile list of bullshit, unfun, little dick chore list achievements. Grown in Idaho. This achievement was the first achievement to really put me over the edge. I've had to grind in video games. I know what it's like to have to compromise enjoyment to earn brownie points. Truthfully, the fact that I am even complaining about an achievement as simple as this one, months after I'd earned it, and in a video game about driving imaginary trucks from point A to point B, screams more about my character flaws than it does ATS being rigged. But I need you to trust me. Grown in Idaho requires you to deliver five deliveries of potatoes from Idaho Farms. You have to deliver from a specific location called Sunshine Crops, with only four locations, one in Grangeville, Nampa, Pocatello, and Twin Falls. You can deliver from the same location five times. So what's the big deal? This should be easy. Yes, this shouldn't be an issue, except for the fact that the percentage of these deliveries being offered to you is low. I don't know the exact percentage, and maybe it's just my aforementioned shit luck, but I remember this achievement taking me three days to get. I would search for Sunshine Crops, which has locations in other states, find nothing in any of the Idaho locations, take a different job for another one of my achievements ad nauseum. At this stage of playing, I was maybe putting in 3 hours a night into ATS, so I'm estimating about 8 hours into just one achievement. In hindsight, this shouldn't be an issue. I've probably spent 3 times that in attempts at beating Hyperlight Drifter without dying. The difference here is that when you run out of other jobs to do that work towards, you just, you're just fucking left with 3 potatoes. You're just left with 3 potatoes on a sticky note looking down at you at 9.30pm on a Tuesday night. You begin to question some of your decisions, like, what is the point in any of this? Nobody else cares about this and I would rather be playing anything else. I'm getting upset over a fucking truck simulator game. I'm losing it. I just need to walk away, you know? I just need to get up. I just need to get up and go somewhere else. But if I do, I'll be thinking about these potatoes. I'll be thinking about how I'm probably doing something wrong. I have to do something so wrong. I mean, how other people got this achievement, right? Like 1.1% isn't that much, but it's a third of the people who have the DLC if we can use the gem state achievement as a reference, which sits at 3.7 completion. So clearly I'm doing something wrong. Am I supposed to deactivate the other DLC so the only sunshine crops that appear are the ones in Idaho? Or that limit my deliveries to a point where I have even less chance of getting those fucking routes in Idaho, let alone the sunshine crops? And where are these fucking potatoes, man? Where are my fucking potatoes? One of the three cargo DLCs that includes a list of achievements is the Special Transport DLC. Special Transport is a unique DLC in that it adds not only new cargo, but specialized routes for deliveries. These routes are outlined very clearly in the jobs menu. They have a white and red candy striped border. The design of the cargo of these achievements is great. From a turnkey house to a massive tech cube, these cargos are downright impressive. The DLC did have a counterpart in previous SCS titles, with Euro Truck Simulator 2 and a handful of these cargos have received a redesign for ATS. Other cargo, namely the transport helicopter, are entirely original to ATS. 
The tricky part with these deliveries is that you have to follow a new set of rules. These deliveries require you to stay within the parameters set by escort vehicles, usually police vehicles, and you have to stay on the assigned route. Detours will forfeit the job, and you cannot allow your cargo or the escort vehicles to be damaged, or else you will forfeit the job. One of the issues you might come across has to do with the escort vehicles. The AI behavior can be buggy, with your leading escort vehicle refusing to make a lane change until the very last minute, often coming to a complete halt before changing lanes. I also found that in some cities, the escort vehicles would counteract each other. At all intersections, the game will place escort vehicles to stop traffic, so that your convoy can drive through without having to make stops. But sometimes this results in any traffic that has managed to make its way in front of your lead escort vehicle to become immobile. If you attempt to drive around this fuster cluck, you'll be warned once about abandoning your escort vehicle, and shortly thereafter, you'll forfeit the job. I found a workaround for this issue. If you park and detach your cargo, you can just use the cab of your truck to push the stuck NPC vehicles just enough to where they become unstuck and drive away. Repeat this process until your path is clear and carry on. The biggest issue with the special cargo is not just the buggy AI, however, it's the achievements. Namely, go big or go home. There are seven achievements tied to special transport, making it the largest in terms of achievements of any cargo DLC. Size matters, home sweet home, get to the chopper, one, two, three, breathe, and your dumper has arrived. Love the name of the last one, man. I just, I fucking love it. These all can be achieved while working on the Big in America achievement, which requires you to deliver one of each of the following cargo. Go big or go home, however, requires you to deliver an oversized cargo on all oversized routes in your current map. Current being the key word. Depending on how many state DLC you own, you could deliver on 14 oversized routes or 66. The dopamine drips. This is now a hyperfixation. There is a workaround. Once again, shout out to Ziran. You can start a new profile on ATS with your state DLC disabled and just run the 14 special transport deliveries. The downside to this is that you will have to level up enough to put skill points into high value cargo. Did I mention that there are skill points in this game? That's right, ATS is an RPG. You gain experience after each delivery, experience after 100 miles of driving in free roam, and experience after successfully maneuvering the cargo into the drop zone. All of this experience is used to level up your trucker, and with each new level comes access to one skill point. This skill point can be spent into one of six categories, to better develop your trucking skills and your trucking cargo options. Regarding skills required for ST jobs, I believe you just need two points in high value cargo and one point into long distance, and I believe two points into fragile cargo. Some special transport jobs may only become available after you level these skills, at least that is the way it felt in my experience. Again, shit luck. After finally getting all of the special transport routes done, I was left with one achievement that still had not unlocked. Despite all of my attempts, I was right back to a single item on the to-do list. I tried and tried to get the game to offer me a transport helicopter job, but it just wouldn't. My three days of tries for potatoes seemed insignificant at this point as I approached the end of week one playing just the special transport DLC. I figured that I could just run deliveries of each item over each new route, but each time I typed in transport helicopter, nothing showed up up. So I exited the game and I launched Rocket League.
If you find yourself in a situation where you're not sure how much more of something you can take, you need to do yourself a favor and take a break. But fuck that. We've got deliveries to make. If you don't want to do the work to make your money, you can always hire other drivers to make money for you. The price of purchase for any garage in ATS was $180,000. On the low end, you can buy a new truck for $90,000. Drivers have a sign-on bonus to be paid of about $1,000, and any additional charges pulled from deliveries for maintenance and hourly wage are also applied. The drivers will still be paid even if they are chicken shit and don't pull a delivery. Rule of thumb, the higher the price of the truck, the higher the gains from deliveries made by your drivers. In the beginning of the game, you can get away with sending five or six drivers out with low-end trucks, but I highly advise on upgrading the driver's trucks as soon as possible to increase your revenues. Towards the end of my playthrough, I was averaging 1.74 million in revenue from drivers each week, but at this point in the game, I was aiming to have my gains paying off my loan payment of at least $5,700 a day. After clearing special transport, I did not take a break. The dopamine drip from playing was netting just above zero and keeping me hooked. I needed to drive. I needed to earn. I needed to see progress. My next investment would come in the form of DLC for Utah, New Mexico, Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. I live in Michigan. We see each season with defined weather conditions, and during the winter, the world truly does sleep. There is a sensation called seasonal affective disorder, and that comes with the shorter days and reduced sunlight. John Hopkins lists some of the symptoms of this disorder to be social withdrawal and increased sensitivity to rejection, irritability, and anxiety. My cat pulling up my carpet in the corner of my room. Feelings of guilt and hopelessness, fatigue, or low energy. Shamelessly, I'm going to create my own subgenre of this affective disorder, calling it simulator affective disorder. Following all of the same symptomatic signs, but is brought on by an increased exposure to simulated reality. One might have a heightened sense of apathy while hours and days slip by without notice. Watching 3M road tape running beneath your 18 wheels of Unreal. As if on some computer generated conveyor belt. You carry the products, but in the same way you are the product. Out of the pan and into the fire, from office desks to dashboards, human interference to be found in the temporal or spatial. In here, you are alone. The faces and the names that you are seeing belong to no one, but also, and in a way, they belong to you. Your face and your name are only as real as you allow them to be. You created this fiction, but now you have to decide if you want to play your part. A solipsistic fortress ruled by a mad king who has grown uncomfortable in their throne. The uneasiness grants you a flaring ember of determination, but will you snuff it out? You stare from within your glass home with a pile of ammunition to throw and your arm tingles with the phantom sensation. New Mexico has a strange achievement, and the only one out of the five that I remember. There are 30 truck stops in New Mexico, and this achievement requires you to find 22 of them. Not all truck stops will benefit this progress, so once again I turn to Big Boss Zeran's guide. The other four achievements are standard. Cities, cargo to ABQ, visiting Billy the Kid Museum and BFE, and finding a shortcut between Raton and Farmington. Utah had an annoying achievement for delivering frack tanks to Gallon. There are five gallon deliveries to be made to three different cities. You can't make a delivery to the same location twice, so you may notice that the numbers don't add up. Each city, with Vernal, Price, and Moab, have two gallon locations. The businesses are located directly next to each other and will be hard to discern from within the quick jobs menu. What makes it worse is that Vernal is the only city of the three with one location that actually counts towards the achievement. So when the game decides to actually give you a frack tank job to any of these locations, you better keep track of where you've delivered and keep a careful eye on the end of the route from the job menu so as to not deliver to a location to which you've already delivered. These have have to be deliveries to and not from, so you can't just take a cargo job from Gallon and consider yourself good. Uh, Salt Lake City also has an achievement for delivering cargo from each of the eight companies in the city. Just purchase the garage in Salt Lake City and take cargo from each of the companies. A Steel and Coastline Mining has two locations in Salt Lake. Make sure to deliver from each location. Other than those two achievements, you've got cities a hidden sign between Page and St. George, and an achievement for visiting each mining location in Utah, with Coastline Mining in Vernal, Coastline Mining in Cedar City, and surprisingly HMS of Salt Lake City. Wyoming. What a shithole. 
Credit again to SCS, you did a phenomenal job with creating Wyoming and ATS. You didn't have a lot to work with, but you managed. As for the achievements, Wyoming has two of the most annoying achievements in all of ATS. Getting the good ones out of the way first, Wyoming has 10 cutscenes and 10 cities to be discovered. There is a hidden 11th town with its own achievement. Then you have Buffalo Bill. This achievement reads as follows, quote, complete 10 perfect cattle deliveries, no damage, no fines, in time, to livestock auctions in Wyoming. What the achievement description doesn't tell you is that they have to be to a specific company called Bushnell Farms, and what's more is that they have to go to one of two Bushnell locations in Wyoming, Riverton or Sheridan. Should be an easy enough achievement, 10 perfect deliveries, so where are the jobs? Well, let's just get the other achievement out of the way while we wait for ATS to generate live cattle to Riverton or Sheridan. Big Boy requires the player to quote, deliver train parts, tamping machine, and rails to or from the rail yard in Cheyenne. Look, we've got this far together, and you know that this isn't as straightforward as it implies. In order to finish the achievements for Wyoming DLC, I was left to wait for the game to generate these extremely specific jobs, which it didn't want to do, so while I continued to rifle through quick jobs, I took to heading north to Montana. Montana has 16 towns and 11 cutscenes to be discovered for their respective achievements. Montana also has three other achievements. I can feel the anxiety seeping back into my fingers as I type this shit out. The only nice part about these set of five achievements is that I am now repeating search terms after each delivery. The odds of getting zero out of five required jobs felt less than the odds for zero out of two. Eventually I was left with four, and then three, and then I took to exploring Colorado, figuring I'd be blessed with even more achievements of this sort. What I didn't expect was for the rarity of the required jobs to go down. Colorado had to be one of my favorite states to drive in, right up there with Montana. So much love went into crafting these maps, and I'm very grateful to the teams that worked on the DLC. I realize that I may come off cynical, but really, there was enjoyment in playing this game. I wouldn't have stuck around if I didn't enjoy it. It's easy to fixate on the negatives, but what's unspoken and intuitive has a lot of positive value within. It's important to consider a new perspective from time to time. Don't allow yourself to dwell in the dark. Enjoy the things that just make sense. I had to have played the Colorado DLC for two weeks before I found out what the fuck a Nichel is. Nacelle. A Nichelle is a cover housing that houses all of the generating components in a wind turbine, including the generator, the gearbox, drivetrain, and brake assembly. That's right, baby. SCS did it again, but this time they did it better. Let me give you some perspective. The potatoes delivery in Idaho presented the first real negative experience I'd had in ATS. I'm willing to admit that my feelings may have been impressed upon by the Snake River achievement, but I recall strong detests to grown in Idaho. Buffalo Bill and Big Boy actually put strain on my grasp with completing this achievement, legitimately. I at one point used the Esteem Achievement Manager to give myself the Buffalo Bill achievement because the live cattle deliveries just were not showing up. I would undo this by removing that achievement and grinding for it legitimately. Energy from above had me convinced that SCS forgot to put the deliveries for Nichelle and Turbine Towers to Pueblo and Denver in the fucking game. Pause this video right now and do a quick search regarding this achievement. I would love an exact percentage for the drop rates on these deliveries. If anyone has done the math that shows the chance of these jobs populating in quick jobs, please let me know. I don't remember the other achievements in Colorado other than the energy from above and the up, up, and away. The up and away requires you to make 10 deliveries to Denver International. They have to go to Denver Air Cargo or Ultimus, but unlike Buffalo Bill, the game actually gives you the achievements. Oh, I lied. While looking over Ziran's guide for Colorado, I was immediately swamped with the bad memories regarding Gold Rush. Gold Rush improves on the frack tank deliveries from Utah in one way and worsens it in another. Deliver 10 deliveries to or from Namik in Colorado. The decency to include the company name is nice, but these have to be two specific locations. One is in Montrose, and the other is in Colorado Springs. Two are actually in Colorado Springs, but CS North doesn't count. 
I'd advise you'd take deliveries from Montrose or to Colorado Springs, however. If you haul out of Colorado Springs, you're going to have to trudge uphill. Meanwhile, delivering to Montrose will likely having you climbing uphill one of two ways. The rest of Colorado's achievements are discovery-based. Four Corners, Eisenhower-Johnson Tunnel, both ways, and the US 550 between Montrose and Durango. You'll likely earn the discovery achievements while grinding out Gold Rush, up and away, and energy from above. After several weeks between Wyoming to Colorado, I finally have been given the last deliveries I needed to wrap up the DLC that I already had. All that's left is to purchase Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas upon release on November 30th. I decided at that time I would take a break until the DLC went on sale. Are you arresting me? No. Open up. Fuck off. Hurry, someone. I mean, like, it's it's basically where it was before. I could probably, like, oh, fuck, no, I pulled it out of the uh, harness. Hold on, hold on, I can fix this. Don't leave, chat. I, I can be such a good, I can be the streamer that you want, I can be the streamer that you need. We're at the 50, though. Right to you, yeah, beautiful, great teamwork from Pro Hattie. <laughs> Passing the play right back to Cammy, letting her do what she does best, which is cook. And there's an example of chamomile cooking for the cook. crowd. <laughs> I thought he could I thought he could 1v1 anybody in the lobby. Pro Hattie previously said he could 1v1 <laughs> anyone in the lobby, but here we have an example of that not being true. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Bro Hattie, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> In this house. In this house. I mean, Suicune's fine. Suicune's absolutely fine. But Entei, I'm more of an Entei kind of guy. Is the nose cam still good? Are you guys okay down there? Are you, are you okay in there?
In 1900, there was a great hurricane. The deadliest natural disaster in the U.S. history. A storm so great that it erased a town from the map. Quote, it began as all things must, with an awakening of molecules. This is a quote from Eric Larson's book, Isaac's Storm. In this book, Larson recounts a day in life in that once coastal town. As he does in all of his works, Larson pays no expense to grab even the smallest recollection from a paper printing, a family journal, or any informational device available. If you haven't read any of Larson's books, I would recommend Isaac Storm before any other. Perhaps more popular and likely referenced in book talk, Larson's other work includes, but isn't limited to, The Devil in the White City. Which is definitely a great read, but if your heart yearns for the sea, seek Isaac Storm first, and then move on to Dead Wake. I have a quote from Isaac Storm that I want to share with you because of the sheer terror that it instills. Quote, At the very center of the eye, the air is often utterly calm. Sailors throughout history have reported seeing stars at night and blue sky during the day. Often, however, the eye is neither clear nor cloudy, but filled with a liquid light that amplifies the stillness as if the world were suddenly fused in wax. The sea, however, is anything but calm. Freed abruptly from the wind, waves from all quadrants of the eye wall converge at the center where they collide and compound to form sudden mountains of undirected energy." Unquote. As you approach the inside of the eye wall, however, everything begins to change, subtle at first and then exponentially. Quote, the eye wall is an impossible, hostile realm where air flowing toward the center reaches its highest velocity. Observers trapped in the cyclone's eye consistently reported hearing a great roar as the calm passed and the opposite eye wall approached. The frightened melee crew of a ship off Sumatra called this chorus the Devil's Voice. To Gilbert McQueen commanding a ship bound for London, the eye wall sang its advance in numberless voices, elevated to the highest tone of screaming." End quote. What did that day look like? What were the thoughts of the residents of that town on that morning? What about the afternoon as the sky grew dim? Did any residents have their radio on to notify them of the pending danger? When the waves began to lap farther inland, did they turn and run? run as fast as they could, grabbing only their family as they fled, an inhuman, uncaring force of nature that yields to none? All these questions will be answered in Larson's book, but there's probably another question on your mind. What does this have to do with ATS? Well, what was the name of the town above? Psych! I didn't tell you. Galveston, Texas. And in Galveston, there are three things. Three small signs. These signs are historical markers, of which you need to find 30 to get the achievement for Avid Historian. Avid Historian is also a one-of-a-kind achievement where an ATS provides zero in-game support for locating these markers. Unlike cutscenes, businesses, towns, or shit, even discerning features suggesting the location of an easter egg, the historical markers just exist. It's your job to locate 30 of them in the largest state map to date within ATS. All things considered, there are 56 markers total, so it is nice that SCS cut us some slack. I initially thought these markers would pose a bigger pain in the ass than they actually did. I'd say a difference of 30%. After combining the forces of Zeran's guide, a sticky note, and a good amount of caffeine and nicotine, I was basically halfway done with these in one night. At this point in playing, I had begun to build a decent sized empire of drivers. So I really let go of my standards for play, figuring I could repair most anything that happened to my truck, and if not immediately, after a rest and some new passive income. That's the positive perspective that's required when grinding out quick job cycles to find extremely specific jobs. My favorite situation with these historical markers is when there is a set of three or four of them right in line with one another. North of Fort Stockton on US Highway 285, there are three to the left as you travel north and before you reach the bend. South of Van Horn, on US Highway 90 driving east, you'll find one near the cutscene and two more before the northward bend. Other than historical markers, there are 25 cutscenes to be discovered in Texas and 30 cities. This DLC had me feeling like I was back where I started, but now with 100 plus hours of experience and capital. There aren't really any annoying delivery achievements in Texas. Closest I came was the Cotton Bloom, wherein cotton seed would not populate as a cargo, but after exploring more of the state, jobs began to filter in. I focused on the seaport deliveries for shoreside delivery and then moved on to Farm Away, wherein you deliver cargo to or from all farms and livestock auctions in Texas. 
Around this time, I finished up Farm Away. I had only two or three cotton bloom deliveries left to make, and I figured it best to purchase a garage closest to the north border with Oklahoma and start to work on the jobs within. Oklahoma really just brought on more of the same, although around Oklahoma I did start to encounter some bugs. Nothing major, mind you. Occasionally, I would have invisible barriers damage my truck while driving on the shoulder, something I am not encouraged to do, and the delivery zones at Yelko, Tulsa would not be visible upon arriving. I found that driving over where the zone would be, and then another a dozen feet, the zone appears and you can finish out the delivery. I believe it was Yelko and Tosa, however I am not certain. Why am I delivering bus hoods to Yelko, you ask? Because Oklahoma is the school bus capital of the world. In the city of Tulsa, up to 11,000 of the iconic yellow American school buses are constructed and rolled out every year. Oklahoma also produces a lot of tires, so you'll be doing deliveries for those as well. And that's about all I have to say about Oklahoma. This DLC was done faster than the rest, and I had just two days left until Kansas was released. Anyone who has quit a job with a two-week notice may be familiar with the sensation that follows. Some of the drab parts of the job may begin to pop. It's as if you've spent a part of your life within this position and you've grown familiar with the building, your co-workers, and your desk. As the days pass, counting down to the last, you may even remember the good times. They weren't good enough to make you stay, but it is important to you that you move on. You had to make that call for yourself to bring change and new opportunities, and many others in your position would agree with the choice that you made. It's sad though. These people with whom you worked may not be family, but they are more than co-workers. They're your friends, and while you move on, they will stay behind. You can try to maintain contact, but most of them will recede into stranger status in the following years. That's okay too. There are billions of us, and with each new day comes new opportunities to meet someone new. If friends is too far, then perhaps just a gesture of goodwill. My first mission in Kansas was to locate 14 cities. This would be the first state I completed without the help of Ziran. You helped me out to this point, and your guides are more than appreciated. I'll link the parent guide to ATS in the description, and if you play ATS, make sure to pop over to Ziran's guides to share some love. Check out their other guides as well. Who knows what else they can do to help you with your other games. I quickly purchased each garage in Kansas and jumped between them to discover their respective cities. Kansas City didn't unlock like this, as Kansas City and Junction City have discoverable zones outside of the main city. For Kansas City, you have to approach the city from the southwest, and from Junction City, you have to approach it from the east. Kansas has 10 cutscenes, but two of them are hidden and you'll have to locate the hidden roads that lead to them. Kansas actually doubles down on the hidden roads, as you'll have another separate achievement tied to locating three hidden roads within the state. There are a little over 20 hidden roads in Kansas total. If you thought that the school bus fact from Oklahoma was cool, wait until I tell you that Kansas is the air capital of the world, the most flyover state, and they're giving you the tools you need to succeed. Cursory reading on this would prove interesting. According to visitwichita.com, quote, Wichita first earned the title of air capital of the world in 1928, when the city's 16 aircraft manufacturers rolled out 120 airplanes off the production lines each week. At that time, one out of every four U.S. built airplanes came from Wichita, end quote. This translates to six deliveries between three companies within Wichita, an aircraft engine inlet and aircraft wing to each of Darwin, Wichita Sky Harbor, and Global Sky Service. The last remaining achievement in Kansas is to do six deliveries from Hutchinson to Meek, two of which have to go to food factories within Kansas. In ATS, there are eight different types of company. One of these types is food companies, and the fandom page for ATS calls these locations, quote, companies which produce raw food, farms, as well as others which use this food to make processed food. As of writing this, the fandom has a list of all companies in game, not including Kansas, but working off the already available food companies, there are 12. Of those 12, there are locations for four within Kansas. Finally, of those four, zero of which will lend progress towards the achievement for Grain of Salt. See, those are food companies, and you are tasked with delivering to food factories. There are eight locations for food factories in Kansas. They are all under the name Flavor Fair. 
So here we are at the end of the road with one achievement left to get, and wouldn't you believe it if I told you that it's another achievement for a specific delivery from a specific company within a specific town to another specific company within Kansas. I purchased Kansas on release day. The DLC went live at 1300 Eastern Time. On the 30th, I discovered every city and located three secret roads. On the 1st of December, I delivered my last aircraft wing to Wichita Sky Farms and located two hidden cutscenes by using photo mode in ATS and Google Maps. Then, around 10 o'clock Eastern, on 12-1, I began trading vehicles with my employees. The point of doing this is to progress time forward by the amount of time required by the employee to finish their current job, and in doing so, generate new jobs in the quick job search. This also generates a good amount of passive income, which can be used to purchase more garages, and in turn, more employees with more trucks to generate more passive income. All that's left is to wait. Patience being the main virtue throughout this journey, jobs will come, and there are always other jobs to take, but you must be patient. So, how long did it take to generate two jobs from Hutchinson Namik to any flavor fair within Kansas? Let's guess the amount of in-game days, and then I'll convert that to real lifetime for reference. As a hint and comparison, the wind turbine nutshell and tower pieces took six in-game weeks to generate, and there were four of them. There are only two jobs that have to go from Hutchinson to Meek to Kansas Flavor Fair. Would you guess one week? Three weeks? Ten weeks? It took just under two weeks for the first job to generate. That first job from Namik to Flavor Fair Topeka. Then nothing for 82 days, almost 12 in-game weeks before I got my second job. This one wasn't to Flavor Fair, and neither were the next three over the course of 375 days. Over one whole year of time spent just looking for a specific job. For reference, all of the other achievements and progress I had made within American Truck Simulator took 210 days. Every cutscene, every city, every hidden path and area, every delivery of every product required to unlock 95 out of 96 achievements done within an amount of time that is only 44% of the overall time it took for Namik Hutchinson to export 5 deliveries and still one delivery remained. A single delivery of any product from Namik Hutchinson to any of the eight Flavor Fair locations. I was willing to give anything for that one last job. I was deflated. I was crushed, sliced and diced, and ready to give up. I started the grind for these jobs with about $22,000 in capital. And after 21 more days, on day 699, a final delivery of salt from Namik Hutchinson to Flavor Fair in Junction City hit my job list. The moment I saw it, I was in disbelief. I had tried hints from several areas online. I had purchased a trailer for delivering salt. I had traversed 489 days of jobs and purchased every garage in the game. I had hired 76 drivers. 63 of those drivers had maxed out their level at level 10. The remaining 13 sat at 9.2, and my capital sat at $408.299 million. I said nothing during that two hour drive. Silently I sat in my room for six minutes, holding W on my keyboard and occasionally steering with A and D. Some songs played on my Spotify, but I heard nothing. Just watched the distance climb down on the minimap.
didn't end up working the full two week notice, but I still intend to list this experience on my resume. This bullshit took 180 hours to play. Next time someone mentions the game time behind completing another game, just tell them about how you know about someone that spent 180 hours over two months and two days to get all of the achievements in American Truck Simulator. If they kick you out of their house, just make sure to leave your story below in the comments. I might not have autism. But this game was a hyperfixation for me. I was sincerely inhabited by the thought of this game. Whenever I was not playing, I would drive for a few hours in game and then while driving to the gas station in real life down the road, I'd think, damn, this is kind of like ATS. I got one of my friends into this shit. But fortunately for her, she doesn't appear to care about the achievements and is just playing solely for the relaxing experience. If you have ATS in your library, I encourage you to reinstall it and give it some time. If you don't know what you want to play, and if you just need to kill some time, crank on some driving music and hit the roads. In one of my previous scripts for this video, I had included a segment about picking road music, but you don't need me to tell you what you should listen to. However, if you want recommendations, I'll flash them on the screen. If you don't have ATS, you should check it out when it goes on sale. It's cheap, and you don't have to go through all of this unless you really want to. The other day my brother and I were talking about video games, and naturally I brought up ATS. He commented on my playtime in game and that he had taken notice. He asked me if I was good enough at the game that I could back up a trailer up a mountain road and deliver it with no damage. Truthfully, I told him no that my playstyle was more of a reckless, hasty playstyle than one that rewarded skill. I don't believe I really got better at driving in this game, I just had more money to spend on repairing my mistakes. I wonder if I will look back on these two months and wonder if I could have been doing something more productive with my time, and if it was really worth it. Nonetheless, with this task out of the way, there is only one thing left to do.